with your writing for this week. We are using chapter four, The Keeper of the Keys from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, and this week in our writing, we are looking at dialogue or what we'd call direct speech and writing it into um, writing of a scene from the book. OK, so make sure you have listened to Miss Williams reading chapter four of our Harry Potter book. Um, and our dialogue will be focusing on a conversation between Hagrid and Harry in that really run down um, tower hut thing that um, Uncle Vernon dragged the whole family to to get away from the letters. Your success criteria this week, I want to be using direct speech, which means using the correct punctuation. And that should happen throughout. We're going to go through that in a minute. Adverbials of manner, particularly how the character is doing something. Prepositions, where the character is speaking in this case. And as an extension, you can add another character to the conversation. OK, like I said, uh, direct speech using punctuation. Um, inverted commas, capital letters after the after you open your speech, punctuation before you close the speech, finishing with a full stop at the end of the entire sentence, and even try and using interesting words for said. Um, we have done a lot of this over the course of year three. Um, should you want a quick reminder, you can go on to BBC Bite Size. Um, I'll put that link in the description at the bottom of this video. Um, but I think we almost... Uh, we almost got it correct as we were at school, so I think we'll be OK. Um, I've used speech here as well in my adverbials of manner slide. Just I can go over the punctuation with you in here, too. So our first sentence is, oh, my goodness, she gasped as she slapped her hands to her cheeks. Um, so here you can see the speech has the speech marks around it as a capital letter after the opening of speech. There is an exclamation mark or a piece of punctuation before closing the speech. Um, and then instead of using the word said, we've used the word, used the word gasped. So in red there, you can see our adverbials of manner. Um, this should give more information about how the character is moving or feeling. Um, and it also gives detail to what they've said and how they've said it. So I've used um, she gasped as she slapped her hands to her cheeks. So she's probably seen something that's surprised her but we haven't said that she's gasped in surprise we've given more of a detail of what she's doing to show how she's feeling that's the manner in which she's um, reacting what do you think you're doing said the teacher angrily her eyebrows shrinking towards her nose so it doesn't actually here i've added in an adverb angrily so it does tell you how she's saying it um and um, I then added in a bit more detail to give an idea about what her face is doing, what her facial expression is. Um, Off to the park we go, she proclaimed cheerily, taking the hands of the children. I was watching Mary Poppins at that point, so um, <laughs> that's what made me think of that. Um, again, it does. we have used an adverb there, we've used cheerily. Um, and I've added in some more details to give an idea of what she's doing while she's saying it. And if you take the hands of someone, it, you know, you can picture that she's taking the hands quite gently and they're skipping off to the park together. So it's adverbials of manner in this case, this week, I want you to almost show body language or the facial expression of the character without drawing pictures, because we're not going to have pictures in our writing this week or, you know, we don't usually have pictures in our writing. So I really want you to help the reader visualise that character, how they're saying it, what they're doing as they're saying it as well. Um, prepositions, we've done lots and lots of this even during home learning and I think you're getting really good at it. Um, they'll add visual visualisation for the character is while they're talking um, and again you can show body language and character characterisation with this. Um, we might be able to tell how the character is feeling through where they are rather than the character actually having to say how they're feeling. Um, so for example you can see um, Mrs Dursley there um, almost crouched behind Mr Dursley. Um, so from being crouched behind someone you could you could infer that that person is feeling quite scared or doesn't want to be 
um, out in, in the firing line. Um, so again, it's really visual for the reader. This whole the, the whole task this week is to be as visual as possible um, and creative as possible because your adverbials of manner and prepositions should really mould nicely in together. Okay, so during your plan this week, this is where most of your work actually comes into it. Um, use it as a messy draft and then write up it in neat, write it up in neat, sorry, once you're happy. Um, so what you want to do here is I've got the direct speech in green, I've got my adverbials of manner in orange and I've got my prepositions in red. So what I did first was I took the speech from the speech bubble and wrote it down next to it, adding in all the punctuation. That's step one. Do it for, well, you've got six different speech bubbles to write up. You've done that before. You've done it many times before with when Jesse came across the sea and also when we wrote about um, Verus and Prissus as well. You've done that before. So take the speech bubbles, put the correct punctuation in, write it down next to it. Then go back to the beginning, add in an adverbial of manner, go through all of six of them that you've got, then go back to the beginning again and see if you can add in a preposition. Um, don't go overboard on prepositions. You don't need to state where everyone is because you're only really talking about Hagrid and Harry. Um, if one of them moves during the speech, then yeah, tell me where they move to using a preposition. But um, I've only really used my prepositions for Hagrid, as you can see here, because that's where the red bits are. Harry is almost just kind of frozen to the spot because he's, he's in some kind of shock, obviously. He's met this huge giant that he's never seen before. And he's telling, telling him all these different things about his life that he didn't know either. So I've got Hagrid kind of moving around and Harry pretty still. Um, my speech bubbles are different to yours so that you don't copy down mine. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, I've decided to put the extension of your writing after the plan because this is what I did. I did my plan first and using the success criteria because there's a lot to focus on as the success criteria this week. So I wanted to just really, really focus on what I was doing there, get my plan written. And then I had a look at the extension and thought, well, what could Uncle Vernon say or someone who else was in the room? Um, so I create a little speech apple for him and then if I feel like I can put it into my writing then I will using the correct punctuation. Okay so this is my model right. Um, I've added in an introduction here which we have done before at school when we've been doing dialogue. Because you've already been given the dialogue to write you don't have to think about that you just have to think about the punctuation where that goes and obviously adding your adverbials of manner and your prepositions. But it would be really nice, um, especially if we want you to do a good side of A4 um, piece of writing, that you add in an introduction. It gives the reader some more context. It gives them an idea of where the conversation's taking place. So you, you think about when we did setting descriptions with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you could, you could do an introduction on the setting description of what the room is like. Um, and where the conversation is taking place. Um, and all I had to do really was think of the introduction by myself and then I used my plan for the bottom half where my dialogue starts um, and just copied it in, in neat. So that's why your plan is really important this week um, to make sure you fill that in. Okay, so here we go. Once the initial shock of Hagrid's arrival had begun to wear off, Harry slowly started to move towards him out of curiosity for why this strange and very big man had come to visit. Aunt Petunia was still cowered behind her husband and Dudley was still frozen to the spot in a dark corner. But Harry felt that there really wasn't anything to be scared of. He didn't know why he felt this way. Harry questioned who he was and this odd man began to speak in a low, friendly voice. Your parents were wizards, Harry, Hagrid explained slowly as he settled down on the chair with a thump. But I thought my parents had died in a car crash, said Harry quietly to himself, his head full of questions. Hagrid stood up suddenly. Car crash, he shouted loudly. How do you think you got that scar on your forehead? He said as he towered above Harry and looked intently into his eyes. They had it coming to them, 
always trouble with the potters, said Uncle Vernon, as he rudely interrupted this moment of realisation for Harry. Okay, so once I finished my writing, I went back and assessed myself. Um, I added in the examples of where I had used the success criteria. So the direct speech I did use throughout, um, and I, I checked, checked that by just putting a couple of examples there. My adverbials of manner, Hagrid explained slowly, he looked intently into his eyes, um, said Harry quietly to himself. Uh, prepositions, as he settled down on the chair with a thump, just this, him sitting down is actually the preposition there. Um, as he towered above Harry, that's another preposition there. And I did add in my um, speech that um, Uncle Vernon Seth said. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so what's left to say is really use the home learning pack this week. Uh, make sure you listen to Miss Williams read the chapter. Um, I've put a clip of the same scene into the home learning pack on the writing section, so you can check that out too. Um, the cartoon I've created for you is like the one that I, I use for myself. It's got the pictures of the characters and speech bubbles next to it. You just need to use that dialogue and put it into direct speech using the punctuation so that's that should be pretty easy for you this week don't try and think you can if you want to think of your own dialogue between the two characters don't copy it from the book <laughs> but if you want to think of it yourself you can absolutely that's fine um i'm just trying to take some of the stress away from you to just we, what we really want you to use is the punctuation correctly and focus on that and as i said before try and make your writing as visual as possible for the reader Adverbials of manner and prepositions really lend themselves to dialogue and creating a fantastic picture for the um, for the reader. So I think you're going to be really good at this, this good at this this week. You've had lots of practice um, adding in dialogue and creating scenes and describing and making it really interesting for the reader. So show us what you've got and really show off. And I look forward to reading it. Bye.